Olympian Carrie Tullison, and this is part one of a two-part video series about the MyLapse timing and scoring software. Timing and scoring software can be used to extract timing data from the MyLapse bib tag, championship, or pro chip decoders. The data from the decoders can be downloaded and distributed using one of the exporters. Timing and scoring also features an optional scoring plugin to easily and reliably create results without the need to use a standalone scoring application. In part one, we will focus on the timing feature. We will explain how to set up an event and how to collect and distribute the event data. If you want to learn more about the scoring features, please skip ahead to part two of the video, how to score your event. If you haven't yet installed the timing and scoring software, Please do so before starting this tutorial so that you can follow the steps live. If you have successfully installed the software, two shortcuts should have been created on your desktop, labeled Timing and Scoring and Timing and Scoring Client. In this tutorial, we will just focus on timing and scoring. When opening the software for the first time, you need to verify your account over the internet with your MyLapse Partner Portal account details. Once you complete that, the software will be authorized. As you enter the software, you will see multiple wizards you are asked to complete. We are going to create a new event. Enter the name of the event, set the date, and select decoder type. We'll choose BibTag in this tutorial and leave scoring disabled. Now you'll enter the software main screen. Here you'll see multiple buttons in the top right corner. We are going to use these to set up our event. We will work from left to right. The first button is BibTag Usage which ensures you only pay for the bib tags that are used during the event. For more information, check out the bib tag usage video. The next button is Add Location. Our example event will be a very common but simple setup with a start and finish decoder. Click on the Add Location button and enter the name Start to create the start location. We now do the same for the finish. The next button is labeled Add Device. When you have your device connected over the local network, it will automatically appear in the online devices list. Select the decoder located at the start location. Then select the start location in the drop down menu and click on assign. Repeat these steps again for the finished decoder. The decoders are now displayed at the designated locations. A question mark will be shown so you can select which part of the data you want to download from the decoder. Some decoder types will download all data instantly. The files are displayed on the right of the decoders. You can select a file and view all of the passings that have been detected by the decoder. Click the Create File button to add a new file in order to organize the data. By selecting the decoder, you can view the status and settings of the decoder and change them if needed. The available settings and information depend on the type of decoder you are using. When the decoder is selected, you can also change which location it's assigned to by going to the Edit menu, Assign to, and then choosing the location. When the event is over, be sure to disconnect. The next thing we are going to do is import athlete data into the software. When you use scoring, this is required. We didn't enable scoring, so it's optional to import the data. The benefit of importing the athlete data is that you will see the athlete's name next to the passings in the file, and you will be able to use the athlete data with some of the exporters. We will come back to this in the next step. Now click on the Athletes button. Click on Import Athletes and select your athlete's file. We're selecting a semicolon as column separator, but this will vary depending on how the file you are using is set up. The same applies for the character encoding set. Our file contains a header, so we check the box and start importing from row 1. Now we have an overview of all the columns in the athlete's file. Select which column contains the chip code. Check the box next to each column that you want to import. If you are going to use the scoring plugin, you need to define the other column types. You now see a preview of the data in the window that was previously empty. The blue highlighted rows are ready to confirm. The red rows need attention. Rows will be highlighted in red when there is an error. For example, an incorrect or duplicate chip code or when a scoring column triggers an error. You can manually modify the data 
or delete the invalid rows to continue. Confirm any changes you have made. Now that the data is in the software, we want to display the data and export it so we can process it. You can choose a display window, user-defined file exporter, database exporter, or TCP IP exporter depending on the situation. For this example, we will use the user-defined file exporter. More information about the other exporters can be found in the manual. Choose the locations that the data should be received by the exporter. Link the locations that the exporter should process. In this demonstration, we will export the data of both the start and finish. Multiple locations can be linked to one exporter. We now send the files to the exporter by clicking on the play icon. You can send a file again by clicking on the rewind button. If you click on the play button of the last file, it will stay in pass through mode. New passings will automatically be exported to the file. By clicking on the save button, the data will be saved into a file. This depends on the kind of exporter that you have chosen. Bib tag decoders need to be synced with the MyLab servers before they can be cleared by clicking on the sync button. This allows you to only be charged by MyLabs for the bib tags which were used. We recommend that you sync the decoder after the race. This requires an internet connection. The sync indicator will show all of the tags that have been synced. When syncing is complete, you will be able to clear the data on the decoder for your next event. Be sure to disconnect from your decoders when you're done and save your event file. Visit mylabs.com for more information or assistance and have a great event.